So as we discuss that material experiencing a sinusoidal curve, you could uh, classify this kind of uh, fatigue and dynamic loading into three different type of loading. The first one we already discussed, we took it as an exercise example and this kind of uh, stress is what we call fully reversed cycle. So why it is fully reversed? It start from a zero value and it reaches maximum value then go back to zero and again it change its direction and, and it experiencing some negative stresses or uh, we call it as the compression so this is a kind of a tension compression cycle and this kind of uh, cycle what we call fully reversed cycle and the second one is little different from the previous one is called the repeated uh, cycle or the repeated cyclic uh, stresses so in this case the stress value is non-zero at the beginning there is some magnitude of stress there in that material and it keep on increasing and after reaching a maximum value it go back to the mean value and again at a reducing up to zero and when it reaches zero again it increases in this uh, stress cycle you could identify there is no compression there is only tension happens tension start from a particular value increases up to a particular limit and go back to zero so this is a kind of stress cycle that happening in the positive y-axis the, that is there is only tension no compression and this is the third kind of loading what we call the fluctuating kind of loading so the difference between the previous one that is the repeated loading with the fluctuating loading is that in fluctuating loading load never reaches zero so here it will not touch the x-axis here what happens means uh, it has a value a stress value at the beginning it increases and it reaches a minimum value again go back so in this uh, stress curve you could uh, identify the stress curve is fluctuating in positive uh, direction and it there is no compression and the stress cycle never reaches that uh, zero condition so these are the three different uh, stress cycle that we commonly experience on fatigue loading so here there is certain terminologies that you should be familiar with whenever you deal with the fluctuating loaders or dynamic load the first one is the maximum value of a stress curve so here we could find the maximum the topmost point of this wave is we called the maximum value or the sigma max and the very bottom point or the lowest possible value of stress in this cycle what we call the minimum value so this is the sigma minimum and when you want to calculate uh, the amplitude of the stress amplitude is basically that the maximum deviation from its mean position so this is what the amplitude it's mark it clearly you could find this is what the amplitude of stress is and basically the black dot line determine the mean value or the average stress value what we call it as a sigma mean so this is the mean stress value of this curve so similarly for repeated stress here we have a maximum stress value right here it's marked as maximum and this is what the amplitude and here the minimum value is zero so in this case sigma minimum is zero so it touches zero means the minimum value for this cycle is zero so in case of a fully reverse cycle it's a different thing here we have a positive maximum value and a negative minimum value but the mean value the average value of any fully reversed stress cycle or tension compression cycle will be zero because it goes in positive direction and the same magnitude goes in negative direction then the mean will be zero 
and uh, you could identify this important and very interesting factor if you consider this uh, fluctuating stress cycle and all other two cycles are a kind of a special cases so when you make the minimum stress value of this fluctuating stress cycle into zero that's when you make sigma minimum equal to zero the fluctuating stress cycle become a repeated stress cycle then when you make the mean a stress value into zero of a fluctuating stress when you want to make this black line as zero when you make a sigma mean become zero the fluctuating stress cycle become fully reversed so fluctuating stress is the parent one another two is a simply a derivative of fluctuating stress cycle these are some set of equation that you should remember when you deal with the uh, numerical problems the first one the change in stress cycle that is uh, the delta sigma is the difference between maximum to minimum so when you want to calculate the amplitude of stress it's delta sigma by 2 or sigma max minus sigma minimum by 2 so it's a standard equation to find amplitude of stress if you want to find the mean stress you have this equation that maximum plus minimum by 2 so it's easy to identify this equation from these diagrams to find mean value it's always max plus minimum by 2 and here we have another uh, thing called amplitude ratio to find the amplitude ratio you can go for this equation is the sigma amplitude the amplitude stress by the mean stress and here we have the stress ratio or it is calculated as the minimum stress to maximum stress so these are the important equation that you can use to identify amplitude of stress maximum stress and mean stress and sometimes the amplitude ratio and stress ratio and you have to always remember one more thing these uh, stress cycle need not to be a sinusoidal all the time so it's our convenience uh, to discuss a sinusoidal kind of situation this uh, stress cycle this dynamic or cyclic stress cycle may be uh, different and unique all the times in practical situation here we have a practical kind of graph a spectrum loading kind of situation look at this it's a graph between stress and time the stress chart from here some value and it increases up to a particular value this is the maximum situation it reduces and it goes in a separate uh, different uh, manner and it reaches the zero sometimes and even it has a small portion of compression and it goes back to positive direction and keep going and this is no sinusoidal wave it's a kind of a very complicated loading situation and here if you calculate the maximum value this is the maximum stress value that uh, that material experiencing and this is this compression is what the minimum uh, situation of a stress on that material and if you go for that uh, calculation you will get uh, the mean or the average stress cycle this is the thing that practically every material experience okay go back to the example that we discussed and we can define these terms the first one the fatigue loading fatigue loading means the cyclic loading or dynamic loading will stress is continuously changing its magnitude as well as the direction and the fatigue of failure is the failure of material due to fatigue loading or the cyclic loading before its yield point so that is an important point whenever you learn about fatigue loading fatigue failure occurs below the yielding of any material remember these three points fatigue failure fatigue loading and importance of fatigue loading okay then as always thank you for watching